Recording in progress. All right, everybody. Hello, hello. Yes. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, um, and happy Halloween. All right, so we are going to do a master class. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so this master class, we're really going to talk about how can we take control, take back control of distractions, because distractions are everywhere, and distractions actually rob us of our happiness, is what the experts say. So amazingly, this research is super interesting. Here's the book right here, and we'll get into it in a little bit but it's called The Myths of Happiness by Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky. So she researches happiness. How about that for our life? Um, and she tells us that when we're distracted, we are not happy. That is not our best place to be. Um, so let's unite and build a beautiful life together. Let's do this together. And you know how it's Halloween? Well, this big old black, it's not really huge, but like a smallish, but really tough looking spider just walked right over my desk. Perfect timing. Okay, so again, this book, Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky, highly recommend. A lot of research. I, I love to, you know, mark it up and dig into it because I try to make sense of this life. And I don't think that we all need to go find the resources to help us navigate being a professional woman, right? Like, why don't we just share the resources? And just, I built a, you know, a simple framework that I use in my groups that I run and my WAG groups. And I have a group called Rebalance and I'm glad to share these with you, but you know, why do we have to all figure this out ourselves all alone? You know, why don't we get together and figure it out together? Okay. So she says that nearly all of us buy into the myths of happiness. So let's talk about this a little bit. What's happening today? Well, you know, if you're a professional woman, you're busy. A lot of things are going on, but maybe nothing's wrong necessarily. We're here to learn. We're here to, you know, build some new long lasting solutions. You're rock stars, but you're tired. You're toast. You have a lot going on. Um, so this webinar is for busy women that want to help others, want to feel creative, want to acknowledge your accomplishments, want to keep growing. Why? Because that's the other secret in this book is setting goals and pursuing goals is where we're happy. So that's why I build my programs called Rebalance and WAG. So that's my women doc accountability group. Um, so I have different programs where I, you know, get together with small groups and we, you know, we grow together in a safe place because it is a little scary when we're doing something new because we're not, um, you know, we're not the experts in the room. And so there are emotions with learning, right? But this is a safe place to learn here at Brain Fresh. That's why I built it uh, myself. I'm the founder of Brain Fresh. And, you know, I want people to feel supported when they're feeling scared and they don't know the next steps and they're uncertain. They feel embarrassed that they don't know. And it's okay. We can do this together, right? But you want to have an impact in this world. You want to make sure that your profession meant something, that you can leave a legacy that you can make you know, those changes in your community that you wanna make. And you wanna feel valued that you're important. Like this beautiful yellow flower in the bottom of the slide there. That's, I just love those lotus flowers, aren't they beautiful? I think that was from Holden Arboretum. So that's a um, huge you know, botanical garden near us in Cleveland, Ohio, um, and just really amazing gardens. And then, you know, they value um, legacy and sustainability. So there's a lot going on there, but they have, you know, beautiful areas where the lotus flowers can grow. Okay. What are we going to learn today? We're going to learn the top 10 challenges that we face when we try to align with our unique values, strengths, and purpose. Everybody has their own unique gifts, right? And so how do we find them and how do we align with them in our professional life? Um, that's what I love to help people with is to make it really clear. Again, we do that in the rebalance program and we do that in the WAG program. Uh, one person came in into the WAG program, one doc, and she said, I just feel like life is flying by. And so we took time to really dream and envision with her. Um, and then she, she just lit up and she thought about like what she really wanted. And she had this dream of something of, you know, being near the beach and uh, the beach more often. And so we, you know, we kind of made that the dream. And then how could we set goals to get closer to that dream? And then how do we set tactics to hit the goals? Um, so that's what we do in Brain Fresh in the WAG group. That's the Women Doc Accountability Group. 
as you know, we, we take time to dream, right? Because life is flying by. We're all going so fast. So we find a clear path to focus on what matters to you. Um, and I built a framework to navigate when you're busy in your career, you don't have time to focus. Um, what are the things that actually have to be done so you feel empowered, so you can live fully in your joy and your purpose and feel meaning in your work? Well, this meant a lot to me to learn more about organizational culture. Um, so this is a model called Shine's Three Levels of Organizational Culture, and you can see the different levels of the glacier, um, the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg, we always say, and then what's deep below the water. So let's jump into this a little bit. Um, it helped me to understand culture. So when we talk about the white part, the tip of the iceberg, it's what we see all the time when we're at work, the artifacts, the behaviors that are the norm in that area. I work in healthcare. So, you know, in healthcare, um, you know, we have various artifacts, various um, behaviors that we do. Maybe it's a stethoscope, maybe it's a white coat. Uh, maybe it's the fact that there's band-aids and models of like I was in my office yesterday with spines and necks and things. And so that's not something you'd see all over, right? In normal offices. So when you see those things, you know, you're in healthcare. So those are pretty obvious, right? When you walk into a hospital, you know, you're in a hospital. And then there's certain norms and values that are there. Um, some might argue that those are changing over time. Um, but there are norms and values. We're there to help people. We're there to help people with their health and their sickness. Uh, we're there to work together for the patient and their families. We're there to support the communities where the hospital systems are. So those are the norms and values. We're there for you know, uh, innovation and creativity and science. Those are the things that are valued in those areas, right? But then there's things that are deep below the water uh, called assumptions and beliefs. What do we mean by that? So there's certain things we assume that's a safe place to work in healthcare, that um, you know that everyone's honored and everyone's welcome, and everybody that works there is treated evenly, and everyone's paid the same, and everyone's given the same opportunities. Unfortunately, none of that is the truth. It's not um, always seen consistently in all areas of healthcare. Um, so the things we assume and that we might believe are not always facts, right? So another thing is, um, you know, in healthcare, we don't always see women leaders. Um, we see them less often than the norm of the population, how many women there are. Um, and so sometimes then the belief is women can't be leaders in healthcare. Uh, women don't have opportunities in healthcare because we don't see it as much as we see men as leaders in healthcare. Um, so we'll dump it, we'll jump into some of that. But I would say we're like these, you know, beautiful pink lotus flowers in this muddy water. And culture is like the muddy water, right? Like you can't see all of it. We talked about what is very apparent, things that you can see, like the artifacts that you can see when you walk into a hospital system or a medical office. And then the assumptions and belief could be deep in that muddy water. And that muddy water is, is full of good things like nutrition and things that are breaking down and sharing parts so that things can live again, right? And grow from it. Um, but you know, there's also dead things in there and things that are old news. And so the culture is interesting. It's that there's things that are hard to see in the culture and hard to name, but there's some norms. And that's sometimes where we have to pause and think like, what do we accept as reality? And what is the truth behind it? Think about that iceberg, the tip of the iceberg way in the muddy water. We're trying to bloom and use all our gifts and strengths. How can we learn exactly what's influencing us? Well, I'm in healthcare, like I said, I'm a neurologist. Uh, I'm Dr. Mary Renzel, for those of you that don't know me. Um, what's going on for women in medicine these days? Well, let's say in my area in neurology, this is a survey from even before COVID. So 42% of the women docs of the women neurologists were saying they were burned out. At least they had some symptoms of burnout and they didn't have enough time to document their work. And they found their environment very stressful. They didn't have a lot of control over their schedule and they reported gender discrimination. But the amazing thing is just like these beautiful yellow flowers in the water, they were doing amazing work, right? They were adhering to clinical guidelines. They were doing great pre preventative care. They were, they were, you know, giving psychosocial counseling to the patients and their families. They had high quality care. And there's been studies like this with women in medicine, women in surgery, women in the ICU, like their patients living longer. So women doctors are doing great work, um, even though sometimes, you know, that assumption is that the women can't be the leaders, the women shouldn't get paid the same, et cetera. 
Um, so does this sound like you? Do you remember that first day of your job where you walked in and you're all enthusiastic and you're so grateful to be there? And now some days you walk in and you're just like, Oof, I don't have a lot of energy for this. I don't have, I don't even know what to focus on. I don't know what's important anymore. I don't know what the opportunities are. I just hoped for more. And you feel kind of stuck in the mud, like the pictures. Um, but work can be exhausting and, and work in healthcare does carry a risk of burnout. Women doctors have a higher suicide rate. Very scary, like four times the general population rate, which is scary. So we cannot mess around with this, right? Like we have to figure out how to navigate this environment that we work in, but we need to work to support our families and to leave an impact in this community. Um, so how do we do this, right? So some people decide to do side hustles. I started a business because I wanted to drive. I wanted to call it my party bus and I built Brain Fresh because I wanted to you know, put people that meant something to me in my party bus so I could drive and find resources for them and interact with people that I didn't typically interact with in my day-to-day -day life in the clinic. So I did, but a lot of people are deciding that's the answer, that they have to have another job. Um, but that the lawyers out there, this is a wonderful book called Fair Shake. Um, and it's a sad story, so be careful reading it. It's just uh, frustrating, I guess is why I'm saying it's sad, because it's showing that, you know, women are having trouble advancing in the career, um, you know, career environment, and there's still a persistent gender wage gap. It's stalled actually since the 90s. I mean, most people have just been working since the 90s. My generation, yeah, I started in the early 90s. Um, and so even my, the younger generation, that's all they know. So stalled. So that is not what we're after. Right. Um, this book gives story after story of women that brought up concerns that they weren't getting either the professional advancement or the wages that the men were. And a lot of times the women were fired or brought, you know, up against in, in court and had to pay fines because they brought the issue to light. So it's very concerning here. Um, you know, what the books, I highly recommend the book. Um, so what do you think? What was the year burnout was first reported in medicine? What do you think? How long has it been around? What do you think? What do you think? Older than me? Almost. It was 1974. How about that? I mean, it's a long time it's been around. It's not news. It's not new news. Um, it's only worsening. That's why it's news, but it's not new. So what's the problem? People are overwhelmed. They're confused about what they should do or how they can stay healthy as they as we enter healthcare. It's like a big, I mean, we try so hard to get into medical school, right? And then we get in and then uh, we are joining a profession that puts at least women docs at risk for suicide. So, you know, and then it leaves no time, very little time for family and friends. And it's hard to have confidence to focus on what matters to us because we're just trying to tread water, right? And so it's hard to know what priorities are or you feel like you're floundering or embarrassed sometimes that you don't know how to navigate the system. Um, and the other thing I, I didn't learn when I was training is that work is important. Work helps us feel important and useful in our communities. It can have very positive brain consequences like literally the structure of the brain and how it's wired there's been some functional mri studies when they test like how fast the brain you know connects to other parts or how uh, kind of thick the connections are in certain areas of the brain um it's very positive for executive level workers where we're uh, like have very intellectual jobs where we're always trying to solve problems uh cognitively uh, so that's good for the brain to always be solving problems so there's good things but if we work in an environment of chronic stress, um, that it can be, have negative consequences on the brain, right? And I never learned that just like today, like if you're here at this masterclass, you actually should give your brain extra support. I have a cup of tea, that'll work. I'll have lunch when we're done here. Um, maybe I'll go outside a little bit and renew with nature. My dog is at my feet, which is lovely. Um, so we have to give ourselves extra support when we want to learn something because the brain is already managing the whole body all the time. So the brain is already like a busy parent. It's already doing a lot of things. So if we want to drive our professional growth. We can't go with this grind method where people say like, just go, go, go and take care of yourself when you retire. It's like, no, that is not going to work. You know, that's a recipe for burnout. Um, so we have to figure out a way to have a sustainable put sustainable rituals into place so that we can care for ourselves. 
So once we adapt, once you adapt, what, what we're going to talk about today, you're going to feel less stuck and less confused, less frustrated, because I want you to feel empowered because the world needs people who are empowered that in with good ideas, right? That are healthy and that are creative and informed and enthusiastic and brave and courageous and feel valued to use your skills and your strengths. So I really do think we ought to be able to build a beautiful life and have meaningful work without hurting ourselves, right? And sometimes it is intimidating or embarrassing to have to set up a complicated well-being plan to avoid burnout and high suicide risk. So who am I? I'm Dr. Mary Rensel. I have four kids. I married my husband, Bob, there in the light blue shirt. Um, I am a business owner. I founded Brain Fresh. Um, I like to work with corporate and academic settings and help professionals understand how they can boost their own uh, empowerment levels so they can feel engaged by focusing and feeling motivated by their own unique focus and strengths so they can leave an impact in this world, right? We don't, we're not born with a manual how to work with our brain and with our strengths. And I like to make neuroscience understandable. I feel like there's a lot of untouched neuroscience resources that are here for you. And I like to break them down and make them very understandable. So this is me. All right, who's ready for the challenges? So you're just like that beautiful flower floating in that culture. And maybe all your friends and colleagues are these green leaves that hold you up, hopefully. Um, but I want you to feel empowered and creative because there's a lot of problems to be solved in this world. And if everybody lives in their strengths, we would have less problems and challenges. We would help each other more. When we're all isolated, trying to figure it out ourselves, we're all wasting, you're not wasting energy, but taking energy to try to solve our own problems. Why not do it together? Why not do it in community like here we're doing today, right? So there are some main themes of the top 10 challenges. Gender inequity is one. Limited business training. Did anyone take any classes in medical school? Any business classes in medical school? You could put it in the chat. No, we're getting a zero. And then this balancing between work and home, you know, women tend to do, you know, more like an hour and a half, multiple hours more of home work, work in the home after work. Um, and then these cultural, these society factors, this culture that we're speaking of, that muddy water that we're trying to figure out like what is influencing us? What messages do we get? That is the culture. Okay, here we are. So let's try to be this bright, beautiful yellow flower that's just rocking it and just soaking in the sun. Um, so here, what are the challenges that we're facing day to day? So gender disparities and opportunities, lack of business training in medical school and a lot of other areas, time constraints, you're busy, you have a lot of things going on. So how are you supposed to also professionally and uh, personally develop and learn about neuroscience tools? That's why I'm here. That's why I built these programs, my WAG and my rebalance programs. And I do one-to-one -one co coaching with folks. I don't take too many, but a little bit at a time to help folks who are thinking of a business or building a business, um, growing a business. So um, I'm a Hello7 certified coach. So I love to share that with folks. But we have a lot of home responsibilities. Like we said, women tend to do at least multiple hours more each day, more than the male in the home. We have financial challenges. We're not learned, we're not taught any financial uh, you know, just basics in medical school. What did you have one class? Zero. I had zero business classes, finances, I, personal finance, nothing. Zero, zero. Um, lack of mentorship in building a business. If you're thinking about a business or lack of mentorship in your own personal or professional development. And a lot of times we wait to be chosen at work, like tap down the shoulder, like you're the one that gets this position. Um, and we just wait, we do good work. We're trying to do all this good work and we're waiting for someone to notice. Um, so there is some art to be, to show people what you're up to and to have, I call it a wing woman. I do with uh, Dr. Amy Sullivan. So we work together and, and tell each other about, um, tell others about our work when we're published or something so that um, people know what we're up to and we're not quote unquote bragging because there is an art to sharing your successes. Um, and of course, there's backlash to women. There's a huge book on backlash uh, against women. So when we share our successes, a lot of times there's backlash. When we speak out in meetings, there's backlash. Um, so I guess we could add that to the challenges. Um, but there's gender inequities in innovation. So there's not as many women working in the innovation space. 
So it's hard to feel welcome in that space. And in the culture, um, you know, it's harder to, um, to navigate when we're taught to grind, just work really hard until we're retired. You know, how are we supposed to, you know, when and when are we allowed to take care of ourselves and to set our own needs in place so we have a sustainable well being plan because we work in a system that has a high risk of burnout and even suicide for especially women doctors. And then there's societal expectations of women to be quiet, to uh, you know, conform to dress a certain way. Have you seen like a woman, uh, weather woman, you know, lately, like, geez, I mean, there's so much skin compared to the male weather man. Um, so there's, there's these, maybe they're unwritten. Maybe you just see them. We're just so used to them, but they are just part of, they are the norm of the culture of what a woman is supposed to do. And, um, what the norms are for women. So if someone is outside the norm, you know, it, it stands out. Okay. So let's talk about a simple nine step framework for women to feel creative and empowered. I like to call it brain vitality. Um, the, the definition of vitality, which I love is that we're living and we're growing. Okay. So yes, we're living, but we're also growing and that helps us feel vital. So you are doing that today by listening to this. So I want you to feel like you can rock it, that you can live it, that you can own it, um, to feel empowered and creative because we need people in their optimal problem solving state. So how do we start? So let's think about it. So there's ways when I dug through the neuroscience research, I picked out the gems and the themes in the neuroscience research. And the first one is finding fun, the power of fun. Surprising, huh? So when we have fun, it's a great neurologic state of the brain. It is a positive state for us where it's a non-judgment state. We're usually physically with other friends or colleagues or family. Um, it's a positive state in that uh, it's a positive emotional state. And when our brain is in a positive emotional state, it gives us an expansive mindset. Okay. The next one is protect your melon. And I mean, protect it from distractions. You know, this whole webinar is about distractions because the world wants to send things to us to tell us what's important, but we could block it and say, no, this is what's important to us right now. Um, I'm going to close the doors and all the windows because that is not important to me right now. And then there's some keys to fine tuning your energy. So a lot of women in, that are working hard in the professional space are saying, I'm toast. I have no energy at all. Um, and so we, I, you know, I, I dug through the literature and how can we kind of rebuild our energy throughout the day? Well, I could share that as well. And then how do you align with your neural powers? How do you align with the power, the strength of the brain? Um, the first one we call it brain priming, all the gold, the yellowish, that's how you prime your brain, brain to see new solutions. And then the align is how you align your brain is made for certain things, it's really good at certain things. So let's align with that, right? So when you live in your strengths, it feels so much better. And when you're building your strengths, it feels so much better than trying to clean up a negative. Okay, so we want to align with what's important to us. We want to strengthen your gifts. You want to believe in belonging because who's around us, how supportive they are, their habits matter to us, their professional development patterns matter to us, their personal habits matter to our health. They are our power, right? And there are, there's more to it. We have nine steps, but today we're going to uh, focus on the first six. So we're going to talk about the red, yellow, and green, okay? So get out a piece of paper, a pen, grab your pen. All right, so let's go through this. So where would you give yourself a red light? Where do you just not do this too much? Like, are, do you have fun in your week typically? If not, that would be a red. If you do, sometimes it's a yellow. If you're like, I'm good, I always have something fun every week, it's a green, okay? So go ahead, find your fun. Would you say it's red, yellow, green? Go ahead and write that down. Just put fun, red, yellow, or green, okay? The reason I want you in the green in all of these is that you we feel more empowered when we're in the green, and that's why we're talking about these. Okay, protect your melon. How do you? How are you with blocking things out of your attention that are not important to you? So a prime culprit, our phones, right? So if you look at your screen time for the last week, what's your average? How much are you on the phone? If you're intentional on the phone and you listen to things and you only look at things that you decided were important to you, fine. Um, but we still have to watch the amount of time because it might be distracting us from things that are important to us in our real environment, right? 
And then fine tune our energy. Are you a red, yellow, or green there? Do you know how to boost your energy throughout your workday? Red, yellow, green. What do you think? Okay, gain your guardrail. So this is where we learn what we're strong in, what's important to us, and we stay in that area. We don't try to do everything. People will ask us, be on committees, do this. Can you can you lead this? Can you build this walk? Can you run this party? Is it important to you now? So if you want to save your energy and work only in things that are important to you, gain your guardrails, okay? So are you a red, yellow, or green on that one? Do you know your gifts? Do you know your strengths? Have you ever taken an assessment called Clifton Strengths? If not, you're red. Um, if you have taken another one like DISC or something, you could put that in there as a yellow or a green. And then do you purposefully build your team? Who Have you ever done a network assessment or a friend assessment? What do your friends add? To, how much do they add to your life? Are there people that prioritize professional development, personal development? Are there people that align with your gifts and strengths? Um, so that's what you want to, you know, assess. Like who are the people around you that you see regularly in your day? In the last week, did you see people that help challenge you, that help you grow, that that help give you support? If not so much, then this is an area that you might be more red. Okay. So let's see how many red, yellow, and greens you have. Why don't you put it in the chat? How many reds? Put it in the chat. Okay. So let's prime our, our brains to block distractions. So that is when we're blocking things that are just not important to us right now. And we can do that with fun by intentionally putting things in our lives that are important to us. Why? Because we could feel stuck. We could have, we all have super busy days, but we really want to focus and have control. When we have control that primes our brain puts us in a, a positive category so we can get more expansive views, we can see more solutions, okay? It can change us from negative emotions to positive emotions if we focus on fun. Positive emotions are a more expansive mindset. It helps us feel creative, to have clarity, to have focus. We want to prime our brain to be able to help our communities, okay? What about protecting your melon? Are you red, yellow, or green here as far as blocking distractions, right? So our brain between our ears, it makes us us, right? It is our essence. Um, without it, we would not be able to work. We will not be able to relationship with friends and families and our communities. It gives us our attention, our energy. Um, so why do we want to protect our attention? We want to decrease our risk of burnout, right? So burnout is emotional exhaustion. We don't want to give our attention to everything. We have to focus on what's important to us so that we can feel creative and we can fortify, right? Find to your energy. Are you red, yellow, or green here? Do you know ways to build your energy up throughout the day? Do you wait till you're on vacation twice a year? Or have you learned ways to refocus, regroup, recharge throughout the days, throughout your work days, in the middle of your work days? It's like a mini vacation in your work days. <laughs> Uh, why? Because there's a lot of stress at work and there's long hours. And there's lots of negative emotions at work, right? We cannot have magical thinking that we can just work for 12 hours. I just don't agree with some of these shifts that are 12 hours, 16 hours, et cetera, unless they purposely have time to go relax and recharge. Um, so the leaders like Dr. Boyatzis, who wrote a book called Resident Leaders, suggest that we take 10 to 15 minutes, three times a day away from work in a parasympathetic mode, which is a relaxation mode. So it might be a walk, it might be just sitting, looking at pictures of someone you love. It might be thinking of a teacher, a mentor that was very helpful. Someone you love in your family it might be your furry pet sleeping under your chair. Um, why? Again, because it, it refocuses us. It gives us a wider perspective, gives us creativity and clarity. So we have to think if we're red, yellow, or green in all of these areas. That, help, that can help us feel empowered, right? So in order to feel empowered, we need to be able to know how to brain prime, how to align, how to design our next steps, right? Um, and so which one's your favorite, would you say? This beautiful pink lotus flower floating with a reflection, so nice. Um, but that muddy water underneath, you know, the culture that we live in, um, what do you need to kind of navigate and keep floating in that culture? Do you need to prime? Do you need to line? Do you need to design? Which one's speaking to you today? Which one's your fave? 
Okay. So in this past hour, we've talked about culture. We've talked about brain wonder, how it can help guide us in a high risk profession. We talked about how we don't have to do this alone. We can do it together. We can, you know, go into this untouched neurologic um, research and figure out how to navigate the culture and the challenges of society with, of being a working woman. Um, there is a clear neuroscience framework to help me and my clients navigate a meaningful career. Um, and now we know like we're not to waste our time, or our energy, and it feels lovely. It feels uh, like we're centered. Um, you know, I have testimonials from some of my folks just saying that um, they're so grateful for a WAG where we, you know, we take time to dream, we envision what we want, and then we set our goals and our tactics. We can do one a week. Um, and we can just feel that action is scary, but once we get it done, we build our confidence and that's neural in a neuroscience sense. We're actually literally changing, you know, how, how the brain is wired and that's confidence and that's learning. So learning is when the brain can work faster in an area, right? So when we do it often enough that, um, that, that neural pathway is easy, it works more easily and that's learning. It makes it easier for us. Like when you're learning how to ride a bike, um, my, I was one of five. And when I learned how to ride a bike, my siblings took me down this huge hill. I just learned how to kind of balance. They took me down a huge hill and I went off the side of the road and into the bushes. Um, and I knew how to ride a bike at level one, but I didn't know how to stop it going down a big hill. Um, so we all need to build our skills slowly over time. And we, there is a way to find our purpose and our meaning professionally. And we can stop waiting to be chosen uh, because women in healthcare, unfortunately, are not chosen as often as men. Um, and we can drive our own professional growth. And that's, again, why I built um, Brain Fresh. And we can rock it, right? Um, so just like this beautiful lotus flower, you can do that. You can just, you know, be floating in that culture. You can understand it. You can clarify it. And you have a choice. You can take action or you can maintain the status quo. You can look for your own resources. I like to make it very simple and actionable and science-based. Um, so we can prime, we can align, we can design with our own unique neural powers because that's what they are, they're powers, right? Now, the other beautiful news is that the brain, in order for adults to change, we have to be aware of our emotional intelligence. So what are our emotions towards our goals? So if our goals are meaningful to us, we have more sustained improvement. So we want to pause and think of what is meaningful to us now. And we do that in WAG and in rebalance as well, because then that gives a higher chance of long lasting sustained improvement. So I'm citing two studies here that were done in adults getting their MBAs and they had sustained improvement 40 to 70%, 75% more if they combine skill building, learning new skills and emotional intelligence. So understanding your emotions and what is important. And we absolutely do that in Brain Fresh because we know um, we can't have magical thinking that emotions don't matter. Emotions 100% matter. Um, so this is, um, we, you know, we talked about the importance of new strategies to navigate life. I value, um, you know, just supporting women. I have this picture here of Girl Scouts because I've been a Girl Scout leader to three different troops because I have three girls. And I do it because I want to help. And I wish I had it earlier. So I want to make it clear. So uh, Balance Rebalance is a four-week program. We unlock fun and play so we can get to that expansive mindset. If you uh, join today, um, you will have 15% off. Actually, all Brain Fresh products today are 15% off. Don't tell too many people because that's a big one. Um, and then if you join this week, you can use the coupon fun today um, and get 10% off this week. Today, it'll be 15% off. So what is it? So rebalance is four weeks. It's when, you know, you can go from saying like life is flying by to focused action with peace of mind or from floundering to savvy and purpose driven from energy wasted on distractions to calm, purposeful energy, confused to competent and smart planning. From waiting for something to come along to having clarity on your values and your purpose. From wanting to leave, because a lot of people want to leave medicine just because I think, you know, that they're just not sure what they want. They don't want to feel devalued and rushed and exhausted, but they're not sure what they do want. So that's what here in this program, we kind of make it, we figure out your values, your purpose, and then how to put yourself in a positive 
mindset so that you can see opportunities and options for you. And from scared to a courageous action taker. So we have action-based sessions. We have clarity of values and purpose. We have a four-week program to align with your amazing brain for more energy and meaning in life. So if you want to feel less stuck, you want to feel more creative, in control, value, joyful, you know, think about it. Take a picture of this QR code. If you get in today, you get 15% off. Actually, all Brain Fresh products are 15% off today. So don't tell too many people or only tell your best friends. Okay. Um, and then, you know, what do I promise? If you come in, it's four weeks, the rebalance program. You will have insights into your unique values that will help you plan. Um, you will will clarify the principles of training. Um, understand the business can be a vehicle to raise your community. You can gain new neuroscience insights. You can value fun to be build creativity at work and home. A lot of times when I do these webinars, fun, it, a lot of people are in red in the fun. They're just not prioritizing fun, or prioritizing work, get things done. But then fun is like an afterthought and it's not the icing on the cake. It's the cake, right? So positive emotions are the times when we feel bonded, we feel connected, we feel joyful. And so that's really important. Again, back to this book called the myths of happiness. I mean, there's so many researchers have figured out what makes us happy. And we have like, like she starts this book off, Dr. Lubomirsky starts this book off saying, um, that we have believed the myths of happiness. We have bought into it. Um, and so we don't wanna do that. We wanna live in reality and use the science that we know the neuroscience to complete our value workshops, our, our purpose workshops so that we know what to focus on um, and we know how to put positive emotions in our work, in our work weeks, right? Okay, so take a picture of the QR code, check it out. Um, join. I would love to have you. So I want to invite you to join because I can help you become empowered. Um, and then you can live fully in your gifts and strengths and live a meaningful life and have, you know, major impact in your communities. Right. So you click on this link and then you enroll and then you watch your emails. All the information will come through your emails. Okay. All right. The big deal today, the coupon is stat S T A T. So go ahead and do that, but it's only today. All right, you got this. Thanks for your attention, everybody. Have a super day, okay?